the Shulamite woman was saying that she's dark, but beautiful, that the sun beat upon her. She said, don't look down on her because her brothers were angry with her for taking care of every other vineyard but her own. So if you look at darkness and associate it with what you can see on face value, you're going to think of race. You're going to think of what is considered dark people. And other translations say black, but the reason why more modern translations say dark is because they're aware of the corporate designation to the term black, being that there really is no such thing as a black people, just like there's really no such thing as a white people. You're whatever nationality you are. That's what you are. Never a color. Nobody is a color. There's not a nationality on this planet that is associated with a color. There's nobody from a country or a place or a town or a village called red. Nobody from a town or a place or a village called black. Nobody from a town or a place or a village called white, etc. So dark means um, the within, the internal, those who go within, those who are on the left-hand path, so to speak. And I'm not referencing um, things that regard satanic practices when I say left-hand path. I'm just saying the opposite of an orthodoxy type of uh, view. A orthodoxy uh, designation to what was considered white as opposed to dark is what is considered on the surface versus what is hidden. So we're talking about <clears throat> don't look at me within like a bad thing. Within me might be dark. Within me might be mysterious. I might be cloaked in mystery. I might be cryptic, but still lovely is what the Shulamite woman is saying. The Shulamite woman is singing a song where this is a part in the song where she goes to talk about herself. She says she's she's dark like the tents of Kadar, like the like the tent, like the tent curtains of Solomon. Solomon, the soul of man. Solomon, the sun and moon. Solomon. The one who asked for wisdom, the one who became the richest and wisest king. Solomon, the son of a king, the son of a warrior. She was saying that she's dark like this so what solomon's tents and curtains were when he was being carried around um from place to place he had soldiers that would carry him on a couch and those were also uh covered by canopy post so it was like a portable canopy bed and <clears throat> he was in a position where he was so rich so wealthy that this was how he traveled at times just was carried from one place to another. They didn't, they didn't even allow him to walk. And he could, but they didn't allow him to. So the veil that covers the man behind this authority in this great position is the darkness, the dark tent. What covers it? What is the veil? What separates the, the prize from the pursuit? That curtain, that screen. She says, don't look down upon that screen. My brothers were angry with that screen. My brothers were angry with that darkness because the sun beat on that. The 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 highest power, the if you go to if you go with a uh, heliocentric, the solar, the solar decision to beat down on me can look like it's unfavorable, like the justice of something that is divine, the justice of something that is light decided to put me in a persecuted spot. It can appear that way. But another way is that the sun is the sun is beating on you, even though you're dark, because you're a representation of enlightenment. That enlightenment is what uh, dawns upon you, because the sun was also representative of that, too, like a bright idea, like a light bulb. That's why that's a light, too. So when you look at it like that, yeah, even though I'm dark, even though I'm mysterious, even though I may not look the part. Still, the sun's rays beat down on me, too. Still, enlightenment pours down on me, too. Still, revelation and enlightenment from on high still beats down on me, too, as I shield the soul of myself, as I shield the soul of man, as I <clears throat> as I don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. And she says, don't look down upon this. And this is a thing that, again, your contemporaries will be angry with. Because it will appear like you're taking care of everybody else's vineyard but yourself. You're always supporting a righteous or a noble cause. And they want to know what about your cause. They want you to descend into a certain kind of vanity that involves the selfishness. And this, this frustrates them. And it intimidates them that you can be selfless yet as powerful as you are. To be ostracized and marginalized 
but still be as great as you are. That bothers your brothers. That bothers them because in their vineyard is all about self-serving to the point of not serving anybody else, to the point of not wanting to help anybody else, not wanting to be a friend to anybody else, not wanting to be of assistance to anybody else. So when you choose the darkness, we're not talking about choosing a negative way. We're talking about honoring the veil that protects you and separates you from what is on the outside because your vineyard is not the same as their vineyard.